I was pretty excited when someone in the DM asked me to talk about game theory. This is one of the few subjects in grad school that really changed my worldview. And I was already in my 30s, by the way. So the best part about learning game theory is that you will realize a lot of strange human behavior is actually pretty logical. Okay, so a bad choice may not result from uh, people's dumbness or some deeper psychological problems. Sometimes it was just simply because the games they find themselves in limit their choices. Uh, you probably heard of the prisoner's dilemma, right? So when both players choose their strategy rationally and logically, and the outcome will be bad for both of them. You can't blame the prisoners for being dumb. They're both perfectly rational. So to avoid the bad outcome, you have to find a way to change the game, not the people. But uh, as the first video on this topic, I want to talk about a model even simpler than the prisoner's dilemma, which is also related to the ongoing events. I want to show you this neat little scenario called the coordination game. Sometimes people also call it the lover's game because the players normally have a lot of common interests, but they also uh, have slightly different preferences. Uh, for example, two people have to decide where to go for their next date. Uh, in some older textbooks, they used to uh, use those super sexist examples, like you know, the man wanted to go see a boxing, and the lady wants to go see a ballet. I hate those examples. Okay, so let's just make it more gender neutral. Say the guy wants to go to a theater and the lady wants to go to a park. Okay, let's say it's the 90s, so they don't really have cell phones. So for both of them, the important thing is to spend time with each other. Right? If they go somewhere alone, whether it's a theater or a park, their payoff will be zero. So payoff just means the satisfaction you derive from certain activities. Game theory assumes that we can quantify each payoff into specific numbers. So if they end up in different places, both of their payoffs will be zero. And if they both go to the theater, the guy gets a five and the lady gets four. And if they go to the park, the guy gets a four and the lady gets a five. So if for some reason they have no way to communicate, well, you may find it weird if you are young and you grew up with a cell phone. But back in my days, when my wife and I were dating, we always have trouble finding each other. Okay, like we would wait at the different exits of the subway or maybe different McDonald's. So this model was pretty relatable. As you can see, uh, if they don't have any information about the other person's plan, there's a good chance that they will fail the game and end up in different places. Maybe you think, uh, it's easy. You know, I'll just go to the place the other person likes. But what if the other person thinks the same way? They go to the place you like. You know, there's no way for you to know for sure. Right, so for two people, it may not be a big deal. But what if a thousand people want to gather and do something? Let's say if they want to have a protest, that rings a bell, right? So if they fail to show up in the same place at the same time, it won't work. Not only it won't work, they may even get arrested or even beaten up. You know, that's also a kind of lover's game. The participants may have different preferences about where they want to protest, but the most important thing for them is to go to the same place. Uh, some games have even higher stakes. Let's say a power transition of a country. Say if a powerful king died without a son, and now he has a daughter from an uh, extramarital affair, and he also has a nephew who has some royal blood. You know, the Game of Thrones stuff. And now the generals and the nobles have to decide who they want to fall in line with. If they fail to coordinate and decide to support different successors, that normally means a bloody civil war. So those nobles may have different preferences, but they will all be better off if they can converge on the same successor. That's a lover's game too. 
So there are so many examples like this. Sometimes people have common interests, but they don't have enough information about other people's strategies. So they fail the game by choosing different strategies. In these games, your best strategy is not what you like best, but what you expect other players to do. Your strategy doesn't depend on your preferences or anyone's preferences. It depends on your expectations. Okay, so the players will be better off if they can find a signal to converge their expectations. In the dating example, if the couple establishes a pattern of behavior, it can help them find each other. Let's say if they never go to the same place twice in a row. That's a pattern, right? That pattern can help them narrow down the options. Also, maybe the theater happens to be screening a movie that both of them talked about. And that conversation can serve as a signal. So a signal that helps players converge their expectations is called a focal point. And in high stakes games, a focal point may be the difference between life and death. In the protest example, sometimes a famous person can serve as a focal point. Uh, let's say if a guy has 200 million followers on TikTok, and he says something like, um, let's gather in front of the city hall on Saturday. That's a strong signal. And that person may not be very involved in the movement, and people may not even like his idea that much. But the protesters will go there anyway because his post serves as a focal point. It's a piece of information that can help you estimate other people's behavior simply because of the sheer number of people it can reach. The information itself may not have much wisdom, but it's an expectation converger, aka a focal point. By the way, that's why most dictatorships put influencers on a short leash, because they don't want them to say something and become the focal point of a protest. And the power succession example is sort of the same, uh, except this time the players are not the protesters, but uh, the rulers. When there's an uncertain power succession, having some sort of a constitution will help. Right? If people can simply look up the document and see who's next in line, there will be less conflict. And of course, having fair elections is an even better idea because it offers a clear numerical base for the succession. Well, of course, none of these methods is clear cut. There will always be controversy. But having a focal point is different from not having one. Okay, it definitely makes a new government more stable. So there's a line in Game of Thrones saying that power resides where people believe it resides. And that's basically a game theory prediction, right? You obey a government not because you like it, but because you expect other people to obey it and you don't want to be on the opposite side. The moment that expectation collapses, you will stop taking that government seriously. It's that simple. So that was a quick summary of the coordination game. Uh, next time I'll talk about the prisoner's dilemma and the tragedy of the commons. This will be fun. <laughs>